I would like to talk a little bit about the third chakra. Uh, the third chakra is located uh, where your stomach is. And the third chakra is really the chakra where you start to show yourself. So you can have a first and a second chakra. Basically, you connect to your body. There is a unity of body and spirit. You have a second chakra, so you also have a will and desires. But you're not showing anything, you're not doing anything. And this is actually where the ch third chakra comes into play. And humans are a little bit funny animals. Because in many animals, these bottom three chakras are actually just one energy center. For them, they are one with their body, they want something and they do it. So there is no division between wanting something and doing it. But we humans are very good at frustrating ourselves. Often we want things, but we don't do things. Or we want something and we have a myriad of ways of doing it and which one to choose. So this division is a tricky division because it requires choice. It also requires that we know our capacity, our personality, and that we have to choose which sides of our personality we want to manifest. And this is basically how we start building our karma, by behaving in a certain way. So, for instance, if I want ice cream, I can do several things. I can just see a little girl with an ice cream and grab her ice cream. I can also see somebody with ice cream and ask, oh, could I have a taste? Or I could go into the kitchen, get some ingredients, make ice cream myself. Um, I could also pay for it, give some person some money and say, okay, I'll have three scoops uh, of ice cream, please. And this variety is basically also what necessitates that we have a separate energy center to encompass the whole different range of behaviors which are part of being human. And the development of the third chakra also shows a lot about the person's um, capability to cope with different situations, um, to have a big repertoire of um, problem-solving skills, of coping skills, of um, methods of doing something. So. The third chakra, you could say, is really an indication of how versatile a person is, how complex a personality they have. Um, it's like the complete repertoire of actions, which is residing in the third chakra. One of the tricky things is, of course, that we learn um, to, on the one hand, develop these skills, but on the other hand, we are taught not to use many of them. Uh, for instance, grabbing somebody else's ice cream, and we're taught, oh no, this is stealing, this is wrong, you should not do that. And maybe you're also taught, what, making ice cream yourself? No, that's too difficult, or you're not good enough with food, or whatever, and you're discouraged from developing that part of your chakra. So, what you find in general, is that when people grow older, the third chakra be tends to become stronger, more mature, because more of the person's talents will actually be able to manifest into behavior, uh, through experience, through learning, um, through being encouraged to do so. Um, but it always tends to be a little bit of a patchwork, because some parts are overused, because they have very good effect, and other parts are underused because there's very little opportunity or they've uh, provided poor effects or there might be emotional blockages or things, convictions about things which happened in the past which are keeping you from fully manifesting your power and ability. So although that the uh, third chakra is rarely a weak chakra, it's yellow like the sun, quite radiant. Um, it can be a very unstable chakra, uh, which at some times is very strong, at other times it's, it's very weak, 
and can sometimes also have uh, a behavior of collapsing under pressure. Um, one of the other problems is also that it is ultimately a selfish chakra. So the higher chakras listen to the lower chakras. And all that the third chakra is listening to is listening to your body and listening to your desires. So the behavior you tend to manifest tends to be very egocentrical. So you want something and therefore you do it. It is not about what other people want, what other people expect, what other people desire. Uh, unless it is your desire to do what they want. But ultimately it is coming very much out of you. And which is completely the opposite of the throat chakra, which is ultimately very much about what the other person wants, what is expected of you. So you could say that the third chakra is very much about your uh, natural behavior patterns. Um, you could say how you would behave if you were uh, a spoiled child. And some people say that, oh, if you don't discipline your child, it will just turn into a little monster. Uh, but actually that is also dependent on the third chakra. So sometimes there are many patterns in that which are considered maladapted. So there can be a lot of aggression in there, uh, can be a lot of manipulation in there. And then often parents and educators feel the need to not to stimulate those parts too much, but to try to stimulate the more socially acceptable behaviors more. So like ask for it, don't just take, and things like this. And, but also by giving all these uh, other impulses, uh, of, in a way trying to teach the person, often the energy is taken away out of the stomach chakra and redeposited in the throat chakra. So these two can be in quite a strong competition with each other. So what should you do? Should you do what feels natural and normal to you? Or should you do what is taught uh, to be the proper response, the proper way to act? And often there is a very strong link between these two chakras. And often energies get a little bit confused. And it is mainly the higher energies of the throat area which go down to create some blocking or change in the third chakra. The third chakra also has some other very important functions. Um, it is about showing who you are and how you would do things. So it is in a way your business card, like come and see me and I can do this for you. So often a lot of attraction to a person's power, to a person's charisma, um, to a person's leadership qualities is due to the quality of the third chakra. Because the person is very good at showing their power. But often also a person who has a very well developed and unblocked third chakra is often also in a position of leadership because nobody is criticizing them or telling them to behave or um, they're not obeying anybody or obeying any rules, they're doing it out of their own impulse. So they often come across as being very um, strong people, very direct people, um, and often in a way also very uncomplicated people. One of the big confusions which happens also is that when a person has a lot of power in the third chakra, people think that the person is stable. Um, in a way they are strong because they can manifest themselves very, very freely. They can let their power flow very freely. Uh, however, that does not mean that they have self-control. Uh, it can be that they're very emotionally unstable, that they're mentally unstable. It can also mean that they're very violent or very selfish. So this instinctive recognition of a person as uh, being strong, as being a leader, uh, makes them very attractive to people who are looking for a leader and especially to women who are often also looking for a man to be strong and stable. But it is not enough to look at only the third chakra, you really need to look also at the other chakras as well to see if not just the person is able to yeah, lead themselves, 
but is also able to really sympathize and connect to the people around them and to do what is best for the whole instead of just what is best for themselves. So for instance if you look at um, uh, corrupt leaders, corrupt politicians um, or people who are only interested in their career, they often have a very strong and well-developed third chakra but the higher chakras tend to be in a way um, eclipsed by the power of the third chakra. So all is in a way pushed into the background by their ambitions, by their thirst for manifesting their power, by in a way doing things or manipulating things. And people like this are very difficult also to oppose because it is our instinct as human beings to follow the leader. We are yeah, yeah, basically herd animals. Um, just like wolves and dogs, we run in a pack and we follow the leader. So going against the person with the very strong third chakra really requires an awareness of your own instincts and also the presence of mind uh, to realize what your instincts are, why they are there, and that you're strong enough to act regardless of what your instinct is telling you. So you really need to liberate yourself from your instinctual patterns to be able to deal with a person who has a very strong third chakra. Besides being a business card, this is what I can do, it is also your armor. The third chakra creates a border around your personal space, around your aura. And this is basically also saying like, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm about, and part of that is what is welcome and what is not. If, for instance, I'm doing the dishes, I cannot work with electronics at the same time. So that's just out. <laughs> and in the same way, if I'm sleeping, I cannot yeah, give lessons. So that is just out. And actually the third chakra it's very much what decides what's in and what's out. So if I'm doing something at this time, then the third chakra is saying like, okay, everything which is in concert with what I'm doing now, which is applicable. So if you ask a question or you ask me to, uh, to demonstrate or you want to show me something um, and ask my judgment about it, that will be open. But other things like phone calls, worries uh, about other matters, personal things. I'm just blocking them with my third chakra there. These energies are not welcome in my aura. And this ability of the third chakra to create a clean aura space, to in a way to sanitize your energetic environment, so it will be supportive to you. Only the energies you are willing to work with are there for you. Other energies are just don't exist for you almost. Um, so it also is very important in, for instance, meditation, uh, in focus, in learning to um, really focus all your energies on one thing and thereby creating breakthroughs. So also for spiritual development, the third chakra is very important. Third chakra is often also associated with the ego. And in a way it is correct, because a lot of the survival patterns we have all reside in the third chakra. So the third chakra is the part of us which tells us in yeah, problematic situations, we're in stress, what to do, how to behave. Because in an emergency situation we're not going to think, oh, what is proper, what is the law, what is re required of me, what is expected of me, or how would other people feel about it? No, if you see a truck barreling down on you, you're just going to jump out of the way. You're not going to say, oh, sorry, could I pass, please? So this is when instinct also takes over to preserve you, preserve your power, preserve your body. So a lot of the survival mechanisms we have and also our ability to, uh, to fight with others and to defend ourselves, they're all in the third chakra. So especially if you're feeling um, you're bothered by, um, by other people or even by spirits or energies 
And it's very important also to try to strengthen your third chakra, to stimulate it so that your own defense will be better and you will be the king or the queen of your own energy body again instead of having to share it with everybody else who is trying to influence you through the higher chakras. But it's very much about being an island, you could say, in, a, in an ocean of energy. So, I hope that this will help you to understand a little bit more of the value of the third chakra.